invited at this year's virtual ECSS Congress. I highly appreciate to present our recent findings on the physiology of pacing strategies during 5,000 meter time trials. According to Lambert and colleagues, pacing can be defined as a subjective competitive strategy in which an individual manipulates speed to achieve his or her performance goal. Depending on the performance goal, whether it is to attain a personal best in the individual time trial or to win a race in a more tactical head-to-head -head competition, the chosen pacing strategy might differ. Various forms of pacing strategies have been described in the literature with regard to speed or power over time. In long distance running, an even, negative or positive pacing are the most frequently used strategies. Previous research found that medalists in long distance events demonstrate a more negative pacing as they are able to increase their velocity towards the end even more, which is called the finishing kick. Performing a high finishing kick is highly relevant for positioning since the difference between gold and bronze is sometimes hard to judge with the naked eye. Given that this requires high abilities of both the oxidative and glycolytic metabolism, knowledge about the interdependencies between performance, physiology, and pacing is crucial. Most of the previous studies compared the pacing strategy of groups that were separated by either their performance or third, certain physiological variables. In this study, we basically reversed this approach and clustered groups by means of their pacing strategy and compared these groups in terms of their performance and the underlying physiological profile. To avoid the influence of performance level, differences in pacing strategies based on the normalized velocity. A total of 44 competitive endurance athletes participated in this study. As an inclusion criteria, females and males had to have a 5,000 meter personal best of at least 22 and 20 minutes respectively. Unfortunately, one participant had to be excluded for the time trial. Procedures were performed on three different occasions with one day separating the tests. On their first occasion, an incremental step test was performed until lactic concentration exceeded four millimoles per liter. This test was used to determine the onset of blood lactate accumulation, running economy, and the fractional utilization of VO2 max. On the second occasion, a 100 meter all out sprint test was performed to determine their sprint time and maximal lactate accumulation rate as a measure of the glycolytic metabolism. VLA max is a parameter that is calculated from post exercise lactate concentration and demonstrated adequate reliability in our previous studies. About one hour later, a maximum effort RAM test was performed to determine VO2 max and the corresponding velocity. To have a relation between the oxidative and glycolytic metabolism, we calculated the ratio between VO2 max and VLA max as well. On their final occasion, a 5,000 meter time trial on an outdoor track was performed to determine performance and pacing. During the time trials, 200 meter split times were recorded, which resulted in a total of 25 splits. The participants were instructed to achieve the best time possible and choose their individual pacing strategy accordingly. In order to reach the finish line with nothing left in the tank, the participants were instructed to increase their velocity towards the end if possible. The time trials were performed at a high heart rate that exceeded 90% of maximum heart rate for the majority of the race in all of the individual participants highlighted in red. On the right hand side, you can see the normalized velocity with a value of 100 representing the average velocity with respect to the time as a percentage of the distance. The black line demonstrates the average pacing profile and the green lines the individual participants. We can see that there's a high variation in pacing strategies, especially if we take a look at the very beginning and end of the trial. And these individual values were used to perform a hierarchical cluster analysis by using Ward's linkage method. Based on visual inspection of this chart, a total of four clusters were identified and labeled A, B, C, and D. This chart illustrates the individual pacing within the four clusters, 
as well as the distribution of sample size and sex among them. Cluster A demonstrated a rather negative pacing with a high finishing kick towards the end. Cluster B demonstrated a fast start and consequently positive pacing and also a high finishing kick towards the end. Cluster C had a similar course as cluster B, except for the missing finishing kick. And since cluster D only included three participants that basically hit the wall during the trials and showed the least performance, they were excluded for further analyses. Given the average pacing in the clusters, cluster A demonstrated a lower normalized velocity in the beginning of the race and a higher velocity towards the end with respect to cluster B and C, except for the final 200 meters that were significantly higher in cluster A and B when compared to cluster C. The clusters demonstrated similar 5,000 meter performance, even if this was normalized to the onset of plug accumulation or the velocity corresponding to VO2 max. Even the metabolic response in terms of immediate post-exercise lactic concentration was similar between clusters, which was kind of surprising. The same was true for their sprint performance and even other conventional performance measures and physiological variables like VO2 max, fractional utilization and running economy demonstrated no significant difference. The only metabolic and physiological difference we found was in VLA max and the ratio between VO2 max and VLA max that was significant between cluster C and cluster A. Whereas cluster A had a higher VLA max, cluster C demonstrated a higher VO2 max to VLA max ratio. Furthermore, we analyzed the correlation between VLA max and the increase in velocity towards the final 200 meters, so the finishing kick, which was statistically significant. This indicates that athletes with a high VLA max tend to demonstrate a more pronounced finishing kick, which could be relevant for race tactics. The regulation of pace during exercise can be described by the anticipatory feedback model that was introduced by Ross Tucker. The anticipatory component states that the physiological inputs before exercise, the expected exercise duration, as well as previous experience help to choose an initial exercise intensity and to create a template for an optimal increase in ratings of perceived exertion that are matched with the remaining exercise duration and the acute conscious RPE. An important efferent feedback arises from the physiological changes that occur during exercise. These metabolic perturbations like a degradation of creatine phosphate or a lowering of intracellular pH can be sensed by group three and four NAF fibers that are um, located in the muscle cell. This feedback allows to modify work rate accordingly, which is in fact our definition of pacing. It seems likely that these processes are highly influenced by the individual metabolic profile, especially regarding gly the glycolytic component, since a formation of lactate in the muscle at least correlates with the lowering of intracellular pH. So athletes with a high VLA max might have an even more immediate feedback, um, efferent feedback, leading to differences in their pacing strategy. But obviously, these findings are just one piece of the puzzle and not free from limitations. It is very important to mention that we do not know whether the pacing strategies performed by our participants were actually optimal. And this was indicated in the previous study in 3K time trials. However, in comparison to the findings of Molinari and colleagues, the participants in our study demonstrated a higher performance level. So I guess they were better experienced in this level. Previous research also highlighted and stressed the importance of previous experience and the endpoint of exercise, which is a crucial point for pacing strategies. So we basically um, adjusted the verbal feedback uh, for the final three, four rounds, so that the end point of exercise at least was uh, uh, standardized between um, participants. In this study, the metabolic response was limited to continuous heart rate measurements and just immediate lactate concentration after exercise. 
even more data points after exercise or lactic concentration during the trials would have helped to verify our findings and to um, yeah, see if our hypothesis is basically true. And this could basically be done in cycling exercise in um, future studies. There are rather conflicting findings concerning pacing differences between females and males that seem to be highly dependent on the respective distance. So in conclusion, maximum lactate accumulation rate seems to be a promising parameter worth considering for analyzing and optimizing pacing strategies in running events. Thank you very much for your attention.